Well, praise the Lord. It's time to begin our Bible study. You all ready to study the Word of God tonight? Amen. We're in Colossians chapter 2, and we will finish it off tonight with the help of the Lord. So um, open your Bible. If you have your Bible, you can follow along. And thank you all for being here, joining us in the Bible study. And for those that are watching online, we welcome you. May the Lord bless us all as we focus our time and attention on Jesus Christ. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to give thanks and praise to you tonight. We appreciate you. We love you. God, you have been so good to us. And we just want to take this time and give thanks for all that you have done. Thank you for the Bible study tonight. We ask your blessing upon it. We ask that you will bless the lives of men and women that will call upon your name, put you first in their life, and seek out your ways. I pray, God, that you will grant them a blessing and you will keep your hand of love and power upon us and protect us from all evil. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, we will finish it off tonight, verses 16 through 23 is the remaining verses. And we'd like to focus, focus our, our attention on those last verses and finish it off. And let's read it. Let's read it. He said, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath, Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and by bands have a nourishment ministered and knit together, increase it with the increase of God. Wherefore if, ye be, wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And we want to use that passage of scripture there tonight, and we want to talk about the title for tonight's Bible study is Know Your Rights. Know your rights, especially the rights that, God, that we have in Jesus Christ. It's, as Christians, it is important that we know what privileges, what rights, what leniency we have in Christ as children of God. Of children of God because if you, don't, if you don't, the enemy can use it against you. The enemy can use it against you and he can bring you into bondage and cause you to suffer unnecessarily if you don't know your rights in God. And so that's what we want to focus on tonight. I remember this one person, this lady, my wife and I used to give her a ride to church. And, um, you know, she had a question about eating pork. And, you know, she's a brand new, brand new Christian or, you know, new Christian. And she wanted to serve God and be pleasing to God. And, and she didn't know all about the Bible. She's learning as she's grown in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, growing up, she, were, she was taught that eating pork was a sin. Of course, under the Old Testament laws, we know it was forbidden for them to eat pork and different kind of meats and stuff like that. And so somebody, no, no doubt, had, had messed her mind up to think that pork, eating pork was a bad thing for a Christian. And so... <laughs> It was a battle. It was a challenge to her because she worked at Wendy's. <laughs> and you know Wendy's got some good junior bacon. <laughs> Wendy's got some good junior bacon. It's one of my favorite sandwich at Wendy's. I don't really eat fast food. I mean, every once in a while. But whenever I go to a fast food place, I like to go to Wendy's and get that crispy junior bacon sandwich. 
And so she was working at Wendy's and having to cook bacon and different things and, and the smell and she wanted to taste it so bad. She wanted a bite and a taste of that bacon. But because she feared the Lord and she wanted to be a Christian and do what is right, she was afraid to eat it because she was, she was taught that it was wrong to eat bacon. And she asked the question, I think she asked me the question one time we were taking her home and she asked the question and began to explain to her how under the Old Testament it was wrong, but God had lifted that burden. And she was very thankful. <laughs> and she was very thankful because now she could enjoy bacon. Uh -huh. Now she could enjoy something that she thought that was forbidden by God. And so it is tonight as Christians, if we don't know what rights we have in God and what privilege we, privileges we have in God, somebody from the outside can come in and try to mess with your mind in so many ways. And maybe they may think that it's wrong and they may try to bring you in bondage, trying to get you to feel guilty about something that God had made you free from. And that's what Paul was saying here. We'll get to it in just a little bit. But the first thing I want to share is that knowledge is power. As you've heard before, it's been shared many times. Knowledge is power. And one of the most important things for us as Christians is to know the Bible. Know what the Bible says concerning our life. Know what is lawful and know what is not. So that you can do the right thing or the right things and you can enjoy your Christianity. You see, it is God's desire. Of course, we know Christianity comes with a cross. We do have to take up our cross and follow Christ. But at the same time, I can testify, uh, having served the Lord for, you know, a few years now, you know, uh, it's a really wonderful, joyful life. Christianity is the greatest life there is to live when you understand how to live it. Christianity is a blessing to be a Christian. It's a blessing to be a child of God, number one, to live a life outside of the control of Satan. As a Christian, we are no longer under bondage to, to the devil. Amen? We are free. That's a blessing. As a Christian, we have privileges. We have uh, blessings. We have the Spirit of God. We have peace. We have access to the treasures of heaven. And so being a Christian is one of the most wonderful things a person can be. But a lot of times people find it hard in, in certain areas of being a Christian is be simply because they don't know what the Bible says or maybe because they know and they resist what God wants them to do. But we want to focus on the part of knowing tonight. We're not here to get deep into obedience and, and those things. We want to focus on the context of what we're talking about here. As Christians, we should know our rights so that no one can put a stumbling block in our way. Don't let someone else judge you in things that God freely gives you to enjoy. Amen? Don't let someone else judge you in things that, some, that, in, in the things that God freely has given unto us to enjoy as Christians. And that's what he began to deal with here in our Bible in verse 16. He said, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So he's letting us know here that uh, people who don't know the Word of God will try to accuse you as a Christian of all kind of things. We know the Pharisees, remember when the disciples were with Jesus and they were walking through the field and they began to pick the corn, the Bible said the ears of the corn, and they began to eat it. And the Pharisees got all mad and upset at them. Why, why is your disciples eating with unwashing hands? As though that was a great crime against God to eat with unwashing hands. Now it is good and proper for you to wash your hands before you eat. But I'm sure all of us don't wash our hands every time before we eat. Amen. Man, there were times when you may be in situations where there is no water and you're hungry and that sandwich is looking at you and you're looking at that sandwich. And what are you going to do? You're going to grab it and eat it, right? And what if you don't wash your hands? Is that a sin? God never said it's a sin. Amen? 
And so the Pharisees had all these things they were judging people by. Uh, the Bible said many other things they do, like when they go to the market and come back, uh, they won't eat unless they wash their hands and wash their feet and all that stuff. And even some of this has passed down to the, to the Muslim faith. Some of the Muslims take this from the Bible. I used to, you know, I grew up, I have a lot of Muslims in my family. And one time I went to the mosque. I didn't go in, but I was out there. But they won't even go into the temple unless they wash their hands. And they wash their feet. It has a bucket of water right there. They wash their feet. They wash their hands, and they wash around your ears or whatever. And then they will go into the temple. And I'm sure they probably got that from the Middle Eastern practice because they were walking in the sand. And then they're walking in the sand there in in Arabia and stuff like that. But here they pass it on as a tradition that people who don't even need to do that are doing it, and it's in their tradition. As a Muslim, before they go into the mass, they will wash their hands. The Jews did the same thing. And so when somebody didn't do it, they accused them, you ungodly person, you didn't wash before you eat? What kind of a, what kind of a godly person you are? And so as we see it on, the, on that level that, that, people, that they were finding faults with the disciples of Christ. And we know it continues. He said in, in verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come. He said, but the body of, is of Christ. We belong to Jesus. We belong to Jesus, and in Christ, we have privileges. In Christ, we have things that are given to us uh, that God doesn't require us of us any longer, such as eating certain meat. We know under the Old Testament, uh, they were not supposed to eat pork and certain kind of meat, uh, you know, the cloven feet and scales and, and, st 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 and things like that. But God lifted that burden. Amen? God lifted that burden, and so as Christians, we have to know our rights. God said, eat whatever you want. It's sanctified or set aside by the word of God and by our prayer so we can enjoy anything we want. There are those today that will try to say that you can't celebrate holidays such as Christmas. We know Christmas is not a Christian holiday. We know it has nothing to do with the birth of Christ as we know that Christ wasn't born on December 25th. But that's just a day that was set aside by the church as a recognition of the birth of Christ. And we celebrate Christmas. Amen? And thank God. Is it a sin to celebrate Christmas? But some people will tell you it is. Amen? There are some religions like the Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't celebrate Christmas. They don't celebrate birthdays. Man, but they sure take that Christmas bonus. Right? And they sure take that, that Christmas day off and they look forward for that Christmas day that they get off from work. But they won't celebrate Christmas. They don't celebrate anything. They don't celebrate birthday. They don't celebrate all this stuff. And they hold people in bondage. They hold people in bondage because they look like they're doing something good. And we'll get to it in a little bit into all that. I got plenty to talk about tonight. Don't worry. <laughs> But, and then there are those, I know, many have account, uh, come in contact with many who thought I was a sinner because I don't keep the Sabbath day. You should worship on the Sabbath. That's the day, the, Lord, the Lord's day, the Sabbath day worship. The Bible said Jesus preached every day in the temple. Amen? He was in the temple daily preaching the gospel. Right? So a lot of people will hold people, hold, try to hold Christians guilty with stuff like meat and drink and observing of holy days and new moons and Sabbaths and stuff like that. And so Paul is telling disciples in verse 16, he said, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. And so Christians, we have to know our rights. Somebody come and tell you, well, you need to keep the Sabbath. They say, no, that burden has been lifted. Amen? That burden has been lifted. That was the case. Lisa was sinning. She works on Saturdays. I'll be sinning because I wash my car on Saturdays sometimes. <laughs> I'm, out there, I'm out there knocking on doors, inviting people to church, visiting people. That's work. Amen. we all be sinners if that's the case. But God had lifted that burden. We're not no longer under that, that ceremonial aspect of the law to, to abstain from meat and to, and to keep the Sabbaths and stuff like that. God relieve us from those burdens. Thank God. Amen. Because it doesn't make you holy. I mean, those things don't make you holy. What makes you holy is obeying the commandments of righteousness and morality, of not committing adultery and fornication and lying and envy and bitterness and, and jealousy and anger and all these things that pollute the soul. Amen? And so, as Jesus said, you eat with an unwashing hand, it goes into the, into the mouth, it goes into the belly, and it comes out 
you know where. <laughs> has nothing to do with holiness. It doesn't make you righteous. Amen? And so, don't let anyone, don't let anyone rob you of, of these things. And, and we can read a little bit of it also in, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4. He talked about this also in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. He said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And the word expressly means precisely or directly. The Spirit spoke directly that this is what's going to happen in the last days. In verse 2, he said, Speak in lies, in hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So he tells you right there that somebody who is teaching all these false doctrines, they're telling lies. Amen? They're telling lies, they're hypocrites, they're telling lies, and they themselves uh, have their, they themselves have their conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they're not even guilty, they, they, don't, they don't even feel the guilt of God anymore. They've been lying so long about the Word of God. And, and I've shared before with you, you know, the, the Jehovah Witnesses, they don't even believe that the Holy Ghost is a person. They, think, they said the Holy Ghost is just a force. That, in my opinion, is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, every sin will be forgiven unto man except the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And so they have a whole religion that is built upon the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. They're wrong. Their conscience is seared with an hot iron. Amen? In verse 3, he said, Forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. We know that the, the Catholics forbid their priests to be married. That's against God. Amen? That's against God. He said here, these are doctrines of the devil, teaching people you can't get married. And you have to abstain from meats. He said, God created me to be received with thanksgiving. He said in verse 4, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast also attained. So don't let anybody know your rights as a Bible study. Don't let anybody put a stumbling block in your way. Don't let anyone judge you in things that God gives you the liberty to enjoy. Amen? Don't let anybody tell you you can't eat pork when God said you can. Now, if you don't like pork, that's fine. I'm not a big fan of pork. I mean, I, I eat it. I mean, we don't buy it except bacon and sausage, <laughs> you know. But, and I'm not a big pork eater because I know it's not a very healthy meat. But I can't tell you it's wrong to eat it. God said, eat it if you want to. Amen? Eat what you want. It was sanctified by the word of God in prayer. And so, don't let anyone judge you in these things. Don't let anyone tell you, well, if you're a Christian, you will keep the Sabbath. Right? One guy tried to tell me that. He was, he was, he was, he was hounding us about the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. And then come one day, there was an opportunity to make some money on the Sabbath. And he jumped on it. <laughs> and me being a young Christian, a lot of zeal and not a whole lot of knowledge, I looked at him and said, you going to do that? He said, yeah. I said, on the Sabbath? <laughs> oh, boy, he got mad. He got mad. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm a company man. <laughs> he was upset. But he was the one that was finding fault with me, you know, about the Sabbath. And I, I should worship God on the Sabbath and all that stuff. I know this, the Seventh-day Advent, Ad, Adventists. The Seventh-day Adventists are big on that. You got to worship and keep, you got to keep the Sabbath and all that stuff. And... The Judaizers, my wife and I ran into one guy in Wilmington, North Carolina. He was so big on that stuff too. <laughs> We're keeping the Sabbath and this and that. And, 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 and you see them and they're living in all kind of sin. All kind of immorality, but they'll keep the Sabbath. Amen. <laughs> they'll keep the Sabbath. But cuss word comes out of their mouth. Lying comes out of their mouth. Adulterous thoughts and action comes out of them. But they'll keep the Sabbath. Amen. <laughs> I'll be all over this tonight. Don't worry. <laughs> In verse 18 and 19, he so said, Know your rights. Don't let anybody put a stumbling block or try to take away the freedom and the liberty that God gives you. Enjoy your Christianity. I'm not talking about sin now. There are things in the Bible that are not sinful that God 
has given us the opportunity to enjoy. Don't let someone lie or take it away from you. In verse 18, he said, Let no man beguile you. Let no man beguile you of your reward, of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up, puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands have a nourishment, ministered and knit together, increase it with the increase of God. And so first he tells us, don't let anybody judge you in meats and that kind of stuff. And now he's letting you, let us know, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone judge you in verse 16. Verse 18, don't let anyone deceive you and rob you of your rewards in Christ. And he, he laid out five things, as one man put it, five things that people will do to, to, to try to deceive people. And, and they all fall under religious activities, as he's sharing here in verse 18, and in um, voluntary humility and worshiping of angels and all that stuff. It's all religious activities, and most of it are considered cults. They're cults, false religion. And the first thing is they will try to self-impose things like fasting and self-denial self-denials of many things to appear religious and to do things that are not forbidden by the scripture. It's like a share like the Jehovah Witnesses. They build their whole religion about you can't do a blood transfusion and you can't, if you do that, you're not, you're not going to go to heaven and you can't celebrate birthdays and you can't celebrate uh, Christmas and, and uh, Easter and all this stuff. And they build a whole religion about it thinking they're doing something good. But what does that have to do with righteousness? What does celebrating a birthday has to do with righteousness or not? It's just a birthday. Jesus went to a wedding. Amen. No doubt he probably went to birthdays too. No doubt he made a... He might have, Mary probably had a birthday for him when he was growing up. Amen. These things have nothing to do with righteousness. But people will try, oh yeah, I don't do this and I don't do that. That makes me righteous. I abstain from this and I abstain from that. I fast, as the Jews will say, we fast twice in a week or we fast seven days a week or whatever. Now, nothing wrong with fasting, but the Bible doesn't say you have to fast in order to get to heaven. Now, if you want to fast and pray, that's fine. But don't judge me if I don't fast. Don't tell me that I'm not a Christian because I don't fast. I fast every night I go to sleep <laughs> until I wake up in the morning. I break it, right? <laughs> And so there are religions that do these kind of things. Like I said, the Jehovah's Witness, the Seventh-day Advent, Adventists, the Mormons will abstain from coffee and all these things, but yet they will sanction polygamy. Right? Now, I don't know if they all do it, but they did. Amen? And so they have all these things they're trying as an outward show, and they're trying to bring people into bondage. You can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and this and that you got to abstain from. When the Bible says it's fine. And so I'm talking about tonight, know your rights. Know the Bible. Know what the Bible teaches. Another, another thing they will do is worshiping of angels. As he said here, voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. You know, the Catholics do that kind of stuff. They pray to angels and they pray to saints. Those are not right in the sight of God. Amen? That tells you that the Catholics are not right. They don't even believe in the born again experience in so many ways. The third thing is religion based upon visions that are supposed to come from God or angel. He said, and in, in, in intruding into those things which they have not seen, vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. The last part of verse 18. And that, that deals with religions such as, uh, I tell you, I'm going to be all over this tonight. All the cults are getting it tonight. Because they're wrong and they impose things upon people that are not biblical. The Mormons, they said, Joe, um, Joseph Smith or whatever his name is got a vision from an angel of light appeared unto him and gave him all these revelations so he can start a new religion. But listen to what the Bible said in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. He said, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel, Unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. God gave us the Bible. That's the only thing we should guide our life by. Amen. The Word of God. 
Learn the Bible so you can know your rights in God. Don't let someone come up with another religion. Oh, we got the Book of Mormon, or we got this book, or we got that, the Watchtower, or we got this. And they're deceiving millions of people because people don't know the Bible. They don't know what the Bible says. And so they're falling for all these things. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, he explained to this. He said, and no marvel. He said, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He said his ministers will do the same thing. He said the devil can transform into an angel of light. And no doubt, that's probably what happened to Joseph Smith. Maybe the devil appeared to him and gave him all these wacky doctrines and all these crazy things. And he began to start this new religion. And millions of people are deceived by it today. Amen. Religion based upon superior knowledge, new discovery, occult secrets, piety, and sensuous feelings. All these things they use, I said in verse 19 and, and in verse 18, they intrude into things. He said, intrude in, into those things which they have not seen. They never seen any of these things or experienced anything. God never showed them these things. It's vainly in their mind. They're puffed up. And so we got religion like science. I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm in all of it tonight. Scientology. Christian science, all these false religions, they have come up and they are doing exactly what Paul is saying. They are judging people by all these things, meats and Sabbath days and all these things. What they are doing, bringing people into bondage. You need to know the truth. You need to know the Bible. You need to follow what the Bible teaches because without the Bible, you will fall into error. And the last thing is in verse, uh, verse 20, he said, uh, verse 19, 20, or 19, he said, or, yeah, verse 19, And not holding the head, speaking of Christ, from which all the body by joints and bands have in nourishment, ministered and knit together, increased with the increase of God. Religions that will not let Jesus be the center of their religion, where Jesus is not the, the, the focus, where the Bible is not the focus, these are all cults. Amen. These are all wrong religion. Well, they got so much good. They do so much good. Of course they do. They have to. Why else would people be drawn to it? Amen? But if Jesus is not lifted up and elevated and He's not the head of that church and He's not the one promoted as God and, he's, and, his, word, and his word is number one in front, in, 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 before their books and their doctrinal statements and all those things, then it is a cult and it is wrong in the sight of God. Amen? And so, know your rights so that no one can deceive you. In verse 20 and 22, 20 through 22, he said, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments of the, and doctrines of men. So, as a sinner, we were subject to the things of the world. But we know when Jesus saved us, He set us free. Amen? He set us free. He said in Galatians 4.3, He said, Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, under the things of the world. We were in bondage to these things. Salvation changed everything about us, especially our desires to do the right things. And He said, We are dead in Christ. The things of this world should have, shouldn't have any hold on us any longer. As He shared in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, He said, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. What he's saying is that God saved us from the world. God saved us from sin. The things that were so powerful and were destroying us, Jesus saved us from it. He saved us from sin. He saved us from the devil. He saved us from the world. He said, now as a Christian, don't let anyone get you all tangled up in ordinances and commandments of man. Don't let people bring you back into bondage. Jesus set you free. Is what he's trying to tell them. Jesus deliver you. We're dead. He said, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances after the commandments and doctrine of man? So he's warning us, as Christians, don't get sidetracked. Don't let all these people come in and tell you all these man-made doctrines to destroy you and to keep you and to lead you away from God. Because people that trust in all these man-made doctrines, of Sabbath keeping and abstaining from meat, they think that's what make them righteous. 
But the only thing that can make us righteous is faith in Christ and our obedience to the morality that is in the Bible. Amen? I'm not righteous because I don't eat pork. I'm righteous because God made me righteous. And so we have to know the Bible. Don't get involved with things that will draw you away from Christ, is what he's trying to tell them. Let your life be wrapped up with the things that will draw you closer and closer to God. As Billy Graham said, don't waste your life on things that have no eternal value. In verse 22, he was teaching, the teachings of man many times are designed to bring people into bondage. People think, and, and, and there's so many people that are suffering because of these things, because man-made religion has imposed upon them all these restrictions that the, Bible didn't, that, that the Bible doesn't impose upon them. Amen? God set us free from the Old Testament ritual. Thank God. Thank God that we don't, you know, under the Old Testament, and, and I know that's not exactly what he's talking about, touch not, taste not, high not, but that, that's what it was under the Old Testament. It was... You shall not touch something. If you touch something dead, you are unclean. Right? If you taste certain kind of meat, you are unclean. If you handle a dead body, you are unclean. And so, people have the same kind of mentality in bringing all these things. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that because you become unclean. But those things are not in the Bible telling us that that will make us unclean as eating meats and touching a dead body. I'm sure you've touched something dead before. A dead bird or a dead rat or something like that. That doesn't mean you become unclean and have to be unclean until the end of the day. And so he's letting them know God set you free. Jesus set you free. He said, when he said, touch not, taste not, handle not, he's letting us know that we as Christians shouldn't even get involved with anything that will, anything that has to do with man-made religion. Amen. Any kind of ordinances that will, that will hinder our walk with God, don't touch it. Stay away from, from those teachings. Stay away from all those lies that the devil propagated about doctrines of eating meat and holy days and keeping the Sabbaths and the new moon and, ho and all those things and, and, and worshiping of angels and all the stuff that I talk about there that the, all these cults teach. He said, don't touch it. Don't even go close to it. Don't taste it. Don't partake of it. Stay away from it. Don't handle it. Don't try to get even accustomed or try to expose yourself to it because all it's going to do is steal your relationship with God. It's going to lead you away from the relationship and the reality with God. And so as Christians, what I'm trying to say is stick to the Bible. Stick to the truth. Stick to what the Bible teaches. Learn the Bible so that no one can lead you away from God. And that's what all these false religion is. They're leading people away from the truth with all their will worship and their false humility and their, and their Sabbath day keeping and their abstaining from meat. All they're doing is leading people away from the reality that is in Christ. So as Christians tonight, we have to know our rights in God. Amen? We have to know the truth so that we can serve God in an acceptable way, the way that God wants us to serve Him. Jesus freed us from all these things and all the man-made doctrine that are contrary to the commandments of God. In verse 23, we're going to wrap it up. He said, Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. All these things look good, is what he's saying. They look good and they look spiritual, but really, <laughs> they don't make you spiritual at all. Amen? The truth about the matter is that don't draw you closer to God. Amen? There is no honor towards God in these things. All it does is it satisfy the flesh. It makes you feel good. Man, I kept the Sabbath. I'm doing good. Man, I'm, keep, I'm abstaining from meat. I'm doing good. Man, I'm, 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 I'm not celebrating birthday. I'm not, celebra I'm not going to any wedding. I'm not even celebrating Christmas. I'm doing good. It's a satisfaction of the flesh. There is no honor to God. Amen. There's no honor to God. I'm so spiritual. It makes, you, makes people begin to brag on their spirituality. And as Paul said, if it's of work, it is no more of grace. Else work will be, grace will be no more be grace. Amen. If we base our righteousness upon all these things, then we can't boast in God. We can boast in ourselves, but it's not going to get very far. <laughs> because the Bible said, let no flesh glory in His presence. Amen. And so, the Bible said, and let's finish off chapter 2 of, of um, Colossians, is know your rights. Don't let anybody lead you away from what God wants. There are things in the Bible that God freed us from. Don't let men bring you into bondage. Know what the Bible said. Amen? 
Eat the pork if you want to, if that's what you like. It's okay. Celebrate Easter if you want to. We know we don't celebrate pagan religion, but representing the, the resurrection of Christ or the birth of Christ. We know Christ wasn't born on Christmas Day, but it's a day we, we recognize as the day that He came into, the, into this world. Amen? Celebrate your birthday. I'm not talking about go get drunk and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. But if you want to wish somebody happy birthday, you know, you can't even wish a JW a happy birthday. A happy birthday they get mad at you. I don't celebrate my birthday. All right. Have a bad day then. Amen. You got to get something done on the Sabbath day. Do it. It's not against the word of God. Amen. We'll be here Sunday morning and Sunday night. Because that's the will of God. Amen. And, so, and tomorrow too, if you can make it tomorrow night, come on. That's the will of God. He said, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. We're assembling to the house of God. Let's come. Let's worship God. That's what makes you righteous because there you are in the presence of God, obeying the commandments of God, learning the things of God. Amen? And so know your rights so no man can bring a stumbling block in your way and cause you to trip and fall. Let God, let the freedom of God, enjoy the freedom that God give you. Amen? And do the will of God and serve the Lord. Father, thank you for this Bible study tonight. We just want to give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. Continue, God, to let the Word of God rest securely in our heart. Father, we give you all praise, glory, and honor, thanking you for your kindness and your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.